Hi, I'm Dominic Harland. I'm the CEO and CTO at GB Labs. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about GB Labs, we've been um, making storage solutions specifically for media and entertainment for the best part of 20 years now. At GB Labs, we've always relished a challenge and we tend to look at technology not from a point of view of what's, what's really clever or, or what's new. We try to look at it from the point of view of what could be really useful. And by spending the time to really look and understand what our customers, in fact you guys in media and entertainment are doing, we can, we can spend the time and the R&D and really look at how technology can solve the problems that you guys have today. That's always been something which we've spent a lot of time and effort in doing. In fact, we were one of the very first companies to successfully make uh, network attached storage uh, work for uh, media production. Um, and, our, and our network attached storage these days will serve for an even 8K uncompressed DP DPX workflows. So having solved the problems with delivery over um, normal ethernet network attached storage, we didn't leave it there. We were uh, very passionate about seeing what other things we could do. So, you know, looking at how people actually use the data and uh, is there any way in which, which that can be controlled. So we've spent a lot of time looking at how we can prioritize in a positive way uh, data to different parts of, of your businesses. Um, we have on the fly replications to make sure that you have great um, workflow of data and, and security. Um, we, we've spent time and effort um, looking into and developing unique uh, instant failover systems as well. So, you know, we really are very, very passionate about pushing the technology as hard as we can to make it as useful as possible. So given some of our history and experience, I'd really like to share with you what, what we've seen or, or experienced over the last few years. And and with that, you know, today's topic is um, with looking at uh, on-prem storage, uh, off-site or off-prem storage, as well as how we might address uh, remote working in, in one form or another. And you know, on-prem storage is, is fairly well documented. There are, are, are various scenarios of, of solving that issue from individual drives to uh, shared storage, of which there are are plenty that have advantages and disadvantages between them. And off-prem storage is, I guess, traditionally been used more as a, uh, a backup or a disaster recovery, and is more becoming the more normal where people are looking at putting a, a cloud storage in. And, and perhaps over more recently, we've seen people uh, use or try to use a cloud storage as uh, a remote working or as an on-prem. And, and it kind of sits there as a, as a, as a, a near line um, storage and and there's a few other things that can come from that. So today we're going to talk about on-prem, off-prem and remote working and, and how they how they can work together or, or not as the case may be. And I think each of those layers are, are reasonably well documented. You know on-prem storage there's there's a number of different uh, choices. Off-prem there's a whole load of different choices and remote working is something that people have been scrambling to over the last 12 months or so. Um, but what really interests me is the relationship between those areas of storage. And, and actually this is something that um, became a lot more interesting to me at last year's HPA when we watched um, the ability of creating a, a film uh, solely in the cloud. And, and during that, the, I think that the challenge, the takeaway challenge, was really how to deal with the, the data in all of these different locations. And, and I, found, I, I personally found that particularly intriguing and was able to spend quite a lot of time looking at that and trying to mesh that with technologies which we already had in progress. So it's the relationship of different areas of storage that seems key. And whether that's somebody working at home or, or whether it's an off-site storage, whether it's a, a cloud uh, storage or, or service A, B and C, you've still got to get data around these places. But much more importantly than just moving the data around, you've got to keep track of it and it's got to be meaningful and you've got to uh, move it in the most efficient manner. These are all things that I'm sure everybody is really uh, pretty 
uh, focused on having spent the last year um, scrambling around with, with these challenges. And I think that um, what we've seen is, is that there are no real golden solutions at this moment in time. And, and it has been a real challenge. You can solve the problem with uh, asset management of some description to keep track of things. You can solve the problem of just using one type of thing, therefore you don't necessarily need to copy the data around. Um, but neither are particularly flexible for what people are, are trying to achieve at the moment. And I think the real thing is what people are still craving is the workflow that they had around about a year ago. Um, I mean, let's face it, they've, they've spent many years developing and getting to that workflow. And the idea would be, are you able to emulate that across different silos of, of storage effectively? And with that in mind, you know, what we, what we looked at is, is, is there another way of doing this? And we really felt that, that central storage is great. And when, you know, central storage has been around for a very long time. And central storage's idea was, was to replace individual workstations or, or bring them together and have one place for uh, the, stor the storage, hence central storage, obviously. Um, and I think if we have a, a look at today, we, we haven't necessarily just got uh, workstations that are islands, but we have islands of storage, whether it's in our, our home workers' homes, whether it's in our on-prem office, that might be on an online or a nearline storage, and we might have various silos or islands of data spread across all over the world. And what interested me was, is there a way in which we can see these islands and bring them together and join them so they can effectively function as one? The whole industry has been involved with, with getting all their assets in one place. And what's happened, um, what's happened actually quite gradually over a number of years and then massively accelerated over the last year is this whole idea has been turned on its head with, okay, well, we, we can't function with things in one place. We have to, we have to try and function with things in lots of different places. Um, and really the, the new, um, the answer to this is to have a new vision of what central storage is. And that should be a way of joining these islands together. It doesn't need to be necessarily one thing in one place. It needs to bring these things together. The thing is though, is it's pretty easy just to say, let's just bring everything together and, and it'll all work lovely. The real challenges here are the, the connectivity between the, the islands of where the data are, um, who can access that data. Uh, there are challenges that uh, different types of silo or, or storage will have different credentials um, and you need to also track and make sure that, that these things work together. Um, so really over the last year um, my personal um, ambition here is, has been to not only recognize what would be the holy grail if you like but to also try and iron out as many of these challenges as possible and i think that really we've done a pretty good job at getting to a point where we're inviting people to come and play with some of our new technology that does address some of this um, and and the key to it really is making sure that the connectivity challenges are solved by using acceleration at, at different endpoints and making sure that um, you're not necessarily presenting too much information to everybody and somehow sort of unifying all of the the users together so that the usernames and the logons are all are all in harmony with each other but also meet the credentials required for each data silo so when we looked at these um, these challenges, we did make some uh, some assumptions, and the assumption was number one that there would still be uh, a place in which the, the the main business would take place. So whether that's uh, a downsized office or the same size office as as, as currently been used, um, but there would be somewhere where you'd have effectively your online 
editors, your online storage and, and, and high data bandwidth tasks would happen at that location. Um, we also uh, made the assumption that there would be uh, good connectivity or reasonable connectivity as a minimum out of that building and that they people would probably be using uh, cloud services and or cloud storage in conjunction with that on-prem facility as well. And we also made the assumption that remote working, uh, although maybe not as intense as it has been over the last year, would certainly continue at a significantly higher rate than it had been prior to this time last year. And I think there's actually some really um, interesting uh, comments I've had from our from our customers over that. It, you know, some people, um, for them, it, it, it means that they can look at taking smaller premises when their next lease comes up. Um, other people, it's well, you know, it saves my um, my workers uh, coming in and, and spending time sat on the the freeway for so long. <clears throat> and other people, you know, just like well, actually, that's great because instead of Wherever we're located, we've got a pool of however many people of, of, of key talent that, that we're doing. We can actually now draw on a much wider net. So whether it's the other side of the country or even the other side of the world, we can go and pull people in if we had a remote working system that kind of worked as well as it did in the office. Given those assumptions, um, the, uh, our solution to that is, is really to take any of the islands that you might have in all of these locations. And we have a, a effectively a hub unit that can manage and uh, map to those various different silos. And it can then effectively um, push those out with a specific set of access criteria, as well as being able to audit who's doing what on all these different bits and pieces. And then it gives any of the uh, remote workers the ability to use uh, local storage purely as an acceleration device. And what this really allows you to do is it gives anybody that's outside of that central office an experience very similar to working into the office. It joins any of your um, off-prem storage locations, so cloud services, cloud storage, that type of thing, into the um, security of your of your existing or traditional network, if you like. And again, the user access for that, um, we can provide uh, an additional set of user access that gives you the same kind of security as you would in your office. And auditing can be established that gives you um, the kind of control and logging that you're used to within your on-prem on storage as well. We're really, really proud of what we've achieved over the last year. We've got some fantastic technology. We've put it into, we put it through its paces. It really works very, very well. We would love to hear from you. If you have challenges right now with any of the things that I've spoken about, and especially even if over the last year you've, you've put things together and, and it's kind of worked, it's got you out of a hole, but a lot of people now are looking to the future. You know, do we want to be doing what we did over the last few months again? Possibly not. Is there a better way? Absolutely. Let's work together and find out what that better way looks like.